Hello, my beautiful Silbar Moss, or any kind of moth you want to be. Thank you for joining us on the Writer's Triangle. This is kind of a switcheroo. Rasta usually does the interviews, but today I'm interviewing Rasta because we're talking about Pixies in the Mist. So everybody, please help me welcome today's author, Rasta Music, author of Pixies in the Mist. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for the... Great introduction. Because <laughs> you're amazing and your book is amazing. I <laughs> love it. I love it. I hope everyone else does too. Are you feeling excited about the release of Pixies in the Mist? Can you believe it's finally here? It's been years in the making. I really, it's it's hard to really believe it's really happening. I, I don't know what to say. It's exciting. It's kind of nerve-wracking. Like, I know it's coming out, so there's nothing I can really do about that, but at the same time, I'm nervous about it, because what will people say? I don't know. What's nerve-wracking about it? Just, uh, it's it's a book being published. It's my creativity and my words being put out into the world for people to judge, and that's a first for me in this, like, fashion. So it's kind of a bit nerve-wracking in that regard. I'll be here to protect you and guide you through it like I do all of our authors, I will shield you from nasty reviews and only share the most positive. <laughs> Except for the ones that make it onto, it's really hard, like, when I get a private neg- negative review and they post it to Goodreads, I'm like, why you gotta be so mean? Right? I'm trying to protect our author's feelings, like, you don't need to spread that into the world. Right? Rude. That's what I think. So, how long is it that since you wrote the book. Now, I know I should know of this, but I don't actually remember. Do you remember when you started writing the book, how long ago it was? Oh, jeez. It was, it feels like forever ago, even though it wasn't really that long. Just so much has happened since then. Like, wow. We, we know it was pre-pandemic, so that's two years. Yeah, so it's at least two years. Uh, I think it was, uh, I think I finished it completely like three years ago and it took me about two years to write it so maybe i don't remember exactly it feels like it's been about four or five years since i started it to now i might be wrong about that so as a writer and working so as a publicist for center by moth working with other writers do you think that was a long process or do you think it was a short process or average for first time author we're talking baby novel here you know, that's that's kind of hard for me to say, because we have worked with a variety of different authors with different levels of experiences with uh, their writing process, as well as whether or not they've been published in any form before. I think that it's on the pretty average side of things, rather than particularly long or short, to get it to um, publication. But I might be wrong about that. Was the process painful for you? I'd say the there are a lot of struggles with the writing process, really getting a good story that I liked and felt good about. Like, I had all the ideas, but then actually putting them into the right words and getting them to be smooth and clean so that there weren't any contradictions because I like to change my mind a lot was difficult. Keeping myself on task, being like, no, stop, don't change it, it's good, it's fine. <laughs> I remember at one point in the middle of writing the book, you were going to make it, instead of about two main characters, you were going to add in about five. It wasn't, it wasn't five. I was, I was wanting to write other characters' stories that were in the book, but it wasn't for inside of that book. Rather, I wanted to write other stories rather than finish the one I was writing. I'm happy that you finished the one that you were writing. Here's a little bit of an embarrassing question. How does it feel to be publishing at your family's owned press? That's not embarrassing for me at all. I am privileged and lucky, and I own that. I'm privileged and lucky to have uh, very supportive parents that I also happen to be going in business with because we're close and we work well together. And so it's nice. I have a direct line to you. I mean, all of our authors have a line to you because they come into contact with you and they have that support. But it feels nice to have the ability to just sit down and talk to you and be like, hey, what do you think? So was that closeness what made you decide to publish with us? 
uh, yeah, it feels very comfortable and I know that I'm going to be taken care of because I know that you take care of the people that you work with. You're very professional and so you're going to take care of me too, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Being so, you're the publicist of public of Santa Barma. How does it feel being on the author side of the process? And what's the most surprising thing in the publishing process coming at it through the the lens of an author? Just how much wind kind of comes out of your sails from the initial、uh, rush of having written the book and then having the process of finding the. Someone to accept it, and then having it be accepted, like that whole thing, has a certain level of excitement, and it's pretty quick paced at times. And then there's this long wait、uh, until actual publication, where it's just like, I'm not doing anything. I'm aware that the book is going to be published. I'm aware things are happening, and I'm part of the things that are happening. But even so, I don't really feel connected to it as an author.、Mm-hmm. And so. That- That contrast is kind of、uh, interesting for me. So, do you feel like the disconnect from your book is what's the most surprising thing about publishing your book, or do you think there's something that was more shocking, or are you feeling connected to your book?、Uh, a little bit of a disconnect from the book is like I wrote that book because it's one of the books that we're publishing, and I'm involved in the process to getting things to publication, and so. I end up kind of disconnecting from it. In my mind think of it. It's that book. It's another one of the books that we're publishing, rather than it's my book that's being published. So you don't feel that ownership? Not as as much as I expected I would have. So did you think that you would be more excited at this point in the process? I didn't really know it. Yeah, I guess so.、Uh, I really thought there'd be a lot more. To it emotionally for me, but it's kind of like I had the deep breath of it being done, and then there's the hurry up and wait process that goes with it, and now I'm here. <laughs> so, are you gonna celebrate the publishing of your book? Do you have any big plans with friends or anything? Or as much as you can celebrate. Uh, yeah, as much as I can celebrate, I'm I'm definitely gonna tell my friends, hey, my book's actually out now. And we can have a little like, yay, good for you from them, and then that'll probably <laughs> be about it. <laughs> so, do you think your family's excited? Do you think me and Dad are excited? Oh、uh, yeah, you've talked about your excitement for it and being really happy that it's coming out and all of that. So, I'm aware of your excitement, and I don't know if you have any plans for me because you tend to like surprise me with things like this for some. Uh, for a very clear reason, I was about to say for some reason, but it's because I like being surprised in this in this way. But yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. So anyone who follows us on Twitter knows that I get super excited. It's hard for me to keep surprises to myself, but whenever I feel the urge to to spoil it, I just tell myself spoilers. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what your family may or may not do, spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> How does it feel to have your book listed in the U.S. Library of Congress? That's like a big deal. I hope you're excited.、Deal. It is exciting. Not telling you how to feel, but I hope you're excited. Yeah, yeah not telling you how to feel. You're just hoping, and I, yeah, it's exciting because I know it, being on the publishing side of that and knowing the how hard it was to get it. It took a while in terms of time and energy, and then we had to invest into making sure that our books were up to standard and all of that. It feels good. My book's going to be available all across the United States. I mean, it's going to be available in libraries specifically all across the United States, and that's awesome because I do think that libraries are wonderful, and I want to support the libraries as well. And I know that you don't pay attention to Twitter, and you're not on the marketing side of things. And I'm really bad at communicating the marketing side of things to you sometimes, but your book is being sold on every continent but Antarctica.、And、you、oh, know、yeah. I want Antarctica. So if somebody who's listening to this, and I've been saying this like in almost all my recordings, I really want to know if one of our books makes it to Antarctica. So if you buy a copy of Pixies in the Mist and you go to Antarctica, please let us know. 
like hit us up down in the comments or hit us <laughs> up on Twitter at Cinnabar Moth Pub. I really want to get a book on Antarctica. It's hard to get stuff on Antarctica, so it would be like a huge deal. Oh, yeah, it would be. I mean, there's not a lot of people up there. So if you're one of those few people going up there, and then you're one of those few people going up there, and you're reading our books, that's awesome. Right? That's a rare thing. And it can be an EPUB or an audiobook. It doesn't have to be a physical copy. Yeah. I know that space is limited. So what do you hope happens next, now that your book is out? Uh, do you hope to write another book? I'm not sure about writing another book. I'm... I don't know. I right now I'm really busy, and so I don't really have a lot of the time or space to write a book. I have enough creativity, I feel, to potentially write more stories, but in terms of time and energy and like motivation as well, it's hard to really put myself into that mindset uh, these days, especially with quarantine. I feel like quarantine's kind of dampened my desire to do much. <laughs> Don't you have, like, five books mapped out? Yeah, I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of ideas. But getting myself to only focus on one and not get excited about the other ones while, and I get bored about the one I'm doing is kind of a problem that I have. And so keeping myself on task with write the story, you have it in mind, just just put the words onto the page can be difficult. Don't you have a book that's, like, two-thirds of the way done? Uh... <laughs> Just tell me all your secrets. Ex- Don't excuse me? Of the way down? A second uh, book? I don't know who told you this information. How do you know this insider information about me? <laughs> You're a really good researcher. <laughs> uh, no, the, the book is... I mean, it's two-thirds of the way done for the first draft. And so, as other authors who are listening or people who have written before probably know, uh, and, and you know, of course... The first draft is almost yeah. never the final draft. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Very true. So how many do you think that it would be almost like writing from scratch at this point? Because I think it's been about a year since you've worked on it. It's been about almost two years now, I think, since I worked on it at all. Because uh, since quarantine, I think I worked on it midway through last year or something. So wait, no, so I'd make it a year. Yeah, never mind, you're right. Yeah, it's been about a year. So do you want to be a writer? Do you think you could be a writer and publicist for Cinnabar Moth? Because I know how much you love working for Cinnabar Moth. Of the two, like if you could have a full-time career as a writer or work for Cinnabar Moth, which one would you pick? I would choose working for Cinnabar Moth. I really, really like working with you and... And with dad working with the family, and also I, I like working in the environment, and I enjoy more than writing. I enjoy being able to provide the opportunity and be part of the process for authors to get their creativity out into the world and have their works out there in a way that makes them feel happy and also reaches people. That's really nice. I like that. That's good energy to be bringing. To the position and i'm sure that the writers appreciate you as well i know they tell me that they appreciate you i don't know if they tell you it's one of those weird things i tell someone i appreciate you but people say it to me i don't know do people say i appreciate you to you uh the authors say th- thank you sometimes but they don't really say that they like they don't say the exact words i appreciate you but i do they do express their appreciation that's nice i think that's good if Pixies in the Mist becomes a bestseller. How would you feel? Would you feel like writing a, a second book then? Do you think uh, that, like, what would that do? Having a bestseller, how would that feel? Uh, it would feel good because it would mean that people liked my writing, so that's nice. And I think that I would probably end up being pressured by you. It'd be like, you wrote a bestseller. You people love your <laughs> writing. You have a second book. Why not just get another one out there? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost done come on you can do it that's so my energy that is but absent my energy would you do you think that would be the thing to spur you on to write more i don't think so i think that writing for me is something that i enjoy in spurts 
And this is true, I think, for a lot of things I do, actually, is I enjoy doing them in spurts of activity, and then I kind of go dormant for them for a while. And then eventually I'll, I'll circle back around to them when I have this mood that strikes me. But I don't think that form really works for being a consistent author. Hmm, yeah, I guess maybe like a once in a blue moon author, like every 10 years you'll get a book out of me. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So the book becomes a bestseller, and usually bestsellers have a really good chance of becoming a movie or TV series. Do you know who you'd want to play Jake and Kenneth, the two MCs in your book? I, to be honest, I don't really follow actors, actresses that much. So I don't have any names that specifically come to mind for either character. I would want, for the casting, I'd want it to actually be a, uh, because Jake is uh, of African-American descent, I would like an Af- uh, African-American actor to play it, or not necessarily American. Um, I want them to be... just want them to be black. From, yeah. You want them to have African ancestry. Yeah, I'd like it to be properly represented. I I know that there have been some issues. I've heard uh, vaguely about some issues with casting in the past of things of that nature happening. I'd like to avoid that for my book. I'd like to actually have representation properly done. But aside from that, I, I guess for Kenneth as well, I, he's a... He's Scottish. Yeah, he's Scottish. Sorry, I blanked for a moment on my own character. (laughs) Yeah, I think I know your book better than you at this point. Maybe. You you worked with me through the entire process, and you're also in working actively on the marketing process, so you've had to constantly have it on your mind, Uh, which I appreciate. You've done a fantastic job with the marketing. Props to you. Can we get a shout-out for Kistfer for her amazing marketing work? (laughs) In the comments or at Cinnabar Moth Pub, just do a You Rock Kistfer. Yeah, or just give this video a like. That would be awesome. And if you're listening to it on the website, go over to the YouTube channel and give it a like. <laughs> <laughs> and Cinnabar Moth Publishing. You can get it at cinnabarmothpublishing.com or Cinnabar Moth uh, YouTube. So, yes, I am shameless. I'm the marketer. I know Rasta's way more professional in the interviews and doesn't just plug, plug, plug stuff. But that's my gig. So I'm always plugging something. Um, like a good marketer. So say your book becomes a TV show or a movie. How involved do you want to be? And do you have a preference movie versus TV? I think that because it's just one book currently that that would serve better as a movie. But if they wanted to turn it into a TV show, I guess they, they could do that. They could try. I don't know if there's enough content for that to really last a long time, but, you know, maybe they want to do, like, a one-season thing or something. Who knows? As far as... <laughs> Limited series on HBO or Netflix. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Like, they could always do one of those. I think that a movie would probably fit the form a bit better, but as far as, like, the creative process for creation of it and being involved in that, I feel like I'm a writer, not a movie producer or a script writer. Like, I'm a, I'm a book writer, I, I'm an author, and those are very, very different lanes. So I don't think I'd be able to provide a lot towards that. I'd rather trust the professionals to do their job. So say that it becomes a movie or TV show, and you think you'd go to the premiere? And what would you wear if you went to a premiere? Um... I'm not actually... I guess it would depend on where the premiere is. Uh, relative to where it's, I am. It would be in the US. Well, yeah, but relative to where I am in, in my life and like the timing and everything, right? Because uh, if we were, to say, for example, during a pandemic, I wouldn't go. Or if it was just not convenient to me at the time, I probably wouldn't go. <laughs> it may sound but kind of silly, like but... And so, like, if they don't fly me out on Arab Emirates Airlines and give me a private first class suite, I'm not going to go. I Sounds like what you're rocking. Pretty much. I don't really. If they're, <laughs> if they're paying me to go, I'll take it, but I'm not going to go out of my way to do it. It's. I think it's great 
that the movie is going out and all of that and but i'm not really interested in having my face be known to a lot of people in in that way to really go out to a premiere and like meet people and do all of that uh, social environment is something i can do but i don't really enjoy necessarily says the marketing person who's like trying to make this book take over the world so i want all of our books to take over the world you're breaking my heart like you gotta go to the premiere well if you say it then of course i'll go (laughs) i would love to go to the premiere it sounds awesome but what would you wear hopefully not guess usually you're dressed in head to toe from Yes, okay. that's like your brand. Uh, yeah, would usually you, like, I wear Gap, would but if I... Non, would you get a non-guest suit? Because <laughs> Gap sells suit jackets, and you actually own a guest suit jacket, and a guest dress shirt, and guest dress pants. Uh, so so I, I typically dress Gap, but if... Oh, Gap! I'm saying guest. Yeah, <laughs> guest is your stuff. You have a guest backpack and all of the guest stuff. So Guess was my generation. I was a Guess kid. Like, the Gap wasn't... I don't remember the Gap when I was a kid. But Guess was around. Yeah. So, sorry about that. Thank <laughs> you for, like, getting your branding correct. You're a Gap kid. Right? Okay, yeah, you are from, like, infants. So it's my fault. I fell in love with the whole Gap kid promotional thing. Oh, you okay, totally so did. Okay, you wear Gap. So, would you wear Guess? I would have to look into guests, see what kind of quality they've got. But probably if I'm going to premiere, I'd I'd buy something nicer, you know, invest a little bit to look sharp. Cause if I'm going to be going out to a social event, I've got to look good. We've already established that you don't want to lose your anonymity face-wise, but what about name, like having your name known? So some famous authors that like just roll off the tongue are like, Terry Pratchett, I have no idea what he looks like. Dean Coons, I have a rumblings of what he looks like. Um, for years, I didn't know what Judy Bloom looks like, but now she's all over YouTube, so I know what she looks like. Do you want that kind of name recognition? I think that would be a nice thing to have if I, you know, if I'm if Pixie and the Mist managed to po- uh, become super popular, and if I end up writing more books, if they become super popular and people knew my name. I think that'd be really cool. I just don't want to have to walk down the street and wear like glasses or some something to hide my face. Uh, although I don't think that would help me in Japan. <laughs> yeah, no, your face sticks out, and I think if you were famous in Japan, there's no hiding. Yeah, if I'm famous in Japan, there's no hiding. Um, I don't look like anybody else. <laughs> yeah. So why wouldn't you want to be that famous in the U.S. because you have your anonymity here in Japan? Yeah, yes, that's true. I guess if people knew my face and I was that famous that people would recognize me on the street in the United States, that wouldn't be that big of a deal because I'd be going on a trip. And if I'm going on a trip and people are like, oh man, that's Rasta. He wrote, you know, Pixies in the Mist or whatever book that they know me for. That'd be cool. So there we have it. You just had like a complete change of heart. I did. Thank you for, you know, helping me through this self-discovery process. (laughs) <laughs> I can always rely on you for that. And I'm so sorry for calling you a guest for when you're a gap kid. But it's late in my evening and I don't usually do the interviews. And now we see why because I just am not professional in this way at all. I'm not the best interviewer in the family. And Rasta is. Thank you so much for having the interviews. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Rasta Music, for talking with us today and being on the Writer's Triangle and we can't wait for the world to get a hold of Pixies in the Mist. Thank you, all of our beautiful Cinnabar moths or any kind of moth you want to be or butterfly. You can be a butterfly if you want, but I'm not Mariah Carey, so I'm not trying to bite that. And we are Cinnabar Moth Publishing. Be sure to buy Pixies in the Mist out October 5th, I want to say. Is that right? I believe it's uh, the 5th or the 11th. I think the 5th is right. It's October 5th. Yeah. October 5th. See, this is why you have the interview gig. You've got everything under control. Yeah. (laughs) 
Tell the people where they can find you. Are you even on social media? Do you go on social media? You have several social media accounts. Where can they find those accounts? Okay, so I do have social media. However, if you contact me on them, you're you're going to get some slow responses. I don't go onto my social media very often. My first for Twitter is at Rasta Music. That's just first name, last name. Very simple. That's my Twitter. If you want to find me on Facebook, I'm also Rasta Music on Facebook. Uh, I think I have an Instagram account, but I don't remember what it is. So if you want to find me there, good luck. <laughs> Yeah, if you find him there, it'll be before he finds himself there. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Rasta. And be sure, for all of our listeners, be sure to visit cinnabarmoth.com and check out the transcripts. And we will have all of the links to his social media. Um, if you urgently, desperately need to get in touch with him, just add us at cinnabarmoth and cinnabarmothpub on Twitter, and I'll poke him. <laughs> <laughs> so... I'll be talking to you next week and Rasta will be talking to you in two weeks with our next interview. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.